every time you show up, I feel happy. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday. It's November 7th. Now, in all my shows, I do the same thing. I share my due diligence with you. I trade penny stocks all day, and through the day, I am looking for those stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, when I do my research, most of it is really being done on the charts. I'm more interested in a chart that has heat than news that has heat. Seems to me the news is just the lumber I'm throwing on the fire, but the fire is in the chart. So I'm looking for flames that are licking up. I'm looking for volume that's coming in and pushing up. I am looking for a breakout setup, pushing up. I'm looking for big bounces, bouncing up. I'm looking for something that makes that chart looks like it wants to rise. When I find a chart that has heat, those flames licking up, then I go looking for lumber to throw into that fire. I go through the press releases, the filings, checking for a catalyst. When I find a nice catalyst and I got a hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are what I share with you each day. First stock we're going to take a look at is EJH, eHome Household Service Holdings. Now, this is a Chinese company working out of China. Now, I first noticed the company because of her chart. It's sweet. It's beautiful. She broke out over the 200 on September 29th, and she has been climbing ever since. With very little volatility, a nice, even climb. But here's the strange thing. She broke out September 29th. Her last piece of news came out at the end of August. There has been no new press releases or filings. That's it. Now, it is big news, but why did the chart wait for a month to break out? I don't know. But the chart is hot and the news is big and it is going to carry on for a year. So I think it's worth looking at EJH. So it finished today at two, well, it's still going, currently at $2.90, closing in on 19% gains. She is a penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ. So you're going to be able to trade this for free. There's no transaction fees with major exchange stocks. And you get the benefit of being able to trade this pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So I've got some information here to share with you. The company, together with its subsidiaries, operates as an integrated household service company in the Republic of China. The company operates through three segments, installation and maintenance, housekeeping, and senior care services. With regard to the installation and maintenance, the company engages in the delivery, installation, repair and maintenance of home appliances, such as refrigerators, stoves, air conditioners, and such. They also sell smart home supplementary merchandise, and they will even move you if you are moving. They do it all. They even do house cleaning, but they do a heck of a lot more than that. They tell us over here that along with the housekeeping, they have a nanny service, confinement nurses, cleaning services. They have internet elderly care and home-based elderly care, hospital care, nanny delivery platform. Folks, I know this sounds like a mundane business to be on the open market, but let's think about this. What they're talking about, everybody can use no matter what country you're in. Help with the kids, help with your, your mother who's old, elderly care, cleaning your house, fixing your appliances, helping you move. It doesn't matter where you live and they are working in the biggest country in the world, second largest population. I do believe India is number one now. My point, they have got a lot of business right there that can make them a lot of money. And speaking of making a lot of money, they're not doing bad on revenues right now. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we had a little bit of a jump here. It's roughly 40% going from 2.6 million to 3.8 million. Share structure for the company, you're gonna love this. The company did a reverse split at the end of September, a one in 10 reverse split, and that's what they were left with. It's legitimate, folks. That is the outstanding share count. You're not reading it wrong. That is 60,000 shares outstanding. You know our float isn't gonna be higher than the outstanding share count, so our float is not gonna be higher than 60,000 shares. Now, this is the situation. 
with these major exchange stocks, there is a minimum criteria for everything. Well, they have a minimum criteria for the float as well. You can't be on the NASDAQ and have anything less than a million shares in the float. Well, we're definitely under a million shares and I'm loving it. This minuscule float is exciting. Well, there is no notification from the NASDAQ that this is a problem yet. They haven't been notified. They've been notified they're in compliance. They did a reverse split to get that minimum bid up over a dollar and it's been climbing ever since then. We're now at $2.90, but they have not been notified that they've got to get their float fixed. So at this point right now, we have got a minuscule itty bitty tiny float of less than 60,000. I know. Financials for the company. Well, they are making money. Back in 2019, they did over $51 million. We know it's millions. We got three zeros here. We got to throw in any of the numbers on any of these charts. They did dip in COVID down to 46 million, bounced back hard up to 74 million, and now have taken a dip down to 63 million in June of 2022, which is the end of their fiscal year. And out of that 63 million, they got to keep about 20 million. Quarterly, NASDAQs don't like to give us quarterlies, but we do get balance sheets. Looking at the cash in the bank for the company, they've got roughly $55 million in the bank. Total assets, $80.5 million. Total liabilities, roughly $16 million. So when you do all the math, total stockholder equity, positive, $64 million. Add in the liabilities, we're at roughly $80 million. This is good for the shareholders. Taking a look at the disclosures. The 20F here is their financial. They don't get 10Ks, 10Qs, 6Ks, nothing like that because they are a company out of China, strictly a foreign company, so they get 20Fs. Back here uh, at the end of October, they filed a not filing 20F on time. That NT says we're not filing it on time. That'll buy them anywhere from five to 15 days that they have to get it in, and they got it in on time. And then this 6K here, this is the notification from the NASDAQ that they're in compliance. No problems, no hot water. And there is no other notification I have seen here about that float. So we are in good shape. Let's take a look at that news now. So we've only got two pieces of news here to consider. One, that share consolidation, the reverse split, which happened 922. And then the big news, which came out August 30th. They tell us here that the company announces that it has signed a greening maintenance and community cleaning care contracts with Wuhan Lidayo property and Longu property for a number of projects with a total amount of more than 18 million RMB. At the same time, the company successfully won the bidding for a number of electrical repair and maintenance service projects, such as air conditioning cleaning for kindergartens and over at the Normal High Specialized College, with a total amount of more than $4 million after fierce competition with a number of bidding units. The total amount for the above two projects exceeds $22 million RMB. Now, I've already done the conversion for you. If XE.com is right, it's roughly $3 million. That's a big difference, $22 million, but it is a huge contract. And the company is making money. So as I said, I think they're doing good business. It's mundane work, but everybody needs it. So in a country like theirs, I think they're going to do very, very well. And the chart is doing very, very well. Let's go take a look at it. We're going to do some charting now. We're going to do it on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this by signing up with TD Ameritrade a few years ago. But since the merger with Schwab, I'm not sure where you get it. But I know it's still free. So we are looking at ticker EJH, eHome Household Services. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We have got a serious rip on the first day of March. She jumped from $2 roughly up to $24, over 1,200% gains, and I have no clue why. And she did not fall away immediately. She stair-stepped her way down, and when she hit the 200, she did take a nice big bounce off of that, hitting our 200 haul, but then broke and fell underneath. We then hit a low here of 79 cents at the end of July. 
Now it was on August 29th, the news came out that the company made those deals. There is the jump for August 29th. She jumped from a dollar five up to a dollar 41. You got about 40% gains there. Came right back down and stayed under the 200 with a blip here but it was on September 29th without any real news. Lots of volume came in and a nice rip. And from there, she has just been climbing and now she's pouring on the steam and she is going vertical, folks. This is looking juicy. Look at our 200-day SMA churning and turning up right now. All of the volume that has come into the picture compared to what was happening before. And our oscillators, Every single one of them is ripping right now, straight to the moon and on fire. Holy cow, our RSI on the four hour chart is clear up over 92. Coming down to that 20 day, one hour view. It's all uphill. We got a low in this corner of $1.26, a high up here of $2.90 that we hit today. As you can see, she is well above that 200, not even coming close to it. She is riding on her 50-day SMA. Whether she's just a little under it or a little over it, she's hanging around it. Now, right here, she's pulled away. This is three days ago without any catalyst. She's picking up momentum. She jumped onto that nine-day escalator, and she is flying. She tagged back down to the 50. We got one tag here. Actually, I don't even think it quite made it. Looks like she hit the 200 haul. Then hit the 20 and lurched and pushed herself up. And she is looking very strong right now. Oscillators agree with me. PPO is pushing up my percentage price oscillator. You read it just the same as the MACD. You need that blue line on top of the other line going up. MACD looks good. Lots of green bars accumulating, getting bigger and bigger. And our RSI is still in the overbought, up there at 71 and a half. Checking out our five-day, five-minute chart. Oh, these are nice charts. Our low here is $1.92. She is on the 200-day SMA. Jumped off of it right here three days ago, right? Got on top of her 50 and has been meandering around that. Crushed the 200 here, but this didn't scare me. When you see a nice climb away from a strong SMA and then see a bar go straight through that strong SMA and come back up no higher than where she started, it's exactly the opposite of the, that directional intentional spike. You consider this a pillar, something to hold up the bridge it's building to climb. And she structured it off and boom, she took a nice jump after putting down that pillar. Here's another pillar going down through the 200 and then back up. Boom, another takeoff. You see what I'm talking about? And here after market, we've had some climb, we've had some fall back down to the 50, not exactly there, the 200 haul, and she's bounced right back up on top of the 20, and I think she could actually be up on top of her nine day SMA. All of our SMAs are looking good on the five minute chart. Our oscillators are excellent. Our PPO is climbing up. Our ADX is falling. You hear me talk about that a lot. When your PPO is going up and your ADX, the red line, are going down and they're getting further and further apart, guaranteed your price is climbing. MACD took a fall with that right there, but she is trying to recover. So did our RSI. That took a big drop coming from the overbought down to 43, bouncing back up to 60. No fresh catalyst, but the chart is hot, folks. And if the volume keeps coming in, I don't know what's going to happen. The company hasn't said they're going to put out any more news or anything, so we're not looking for any catalyst. This is more about the technicals with a stale catalyst. But as you can see, she is running nonetheless. EJH, put it on your watch list. It isn't going to hurt. Now, I can't help wondering if maybe you already heard the news about this company. It's huge news. This is Jumaya Technologies, ticker JMIA. At the beginning of this month, she made a deal with one of the most innovative, popular companies in the world. Everybody knows who they are. Do you know what I'm talking about? I didn't think so. That's why I'm sharing this with you. Not to mention the chart is hot. It's an atypical breakout chart that is breaking out right now. So Jemiah finished today at $2.72 with about 4.5% gains. She too is on the major exchange. She's on the New York Stock Exchange. 
but you get the same benefits as you do trading on the NASDAQ. No transaction fees, and you get to trade pre-market, after-market as well. So what is Jumaya about? Well, they tell us here that Jumaya is a leading e-commerce platform in Africa. Our marketplace is supported by our proprietary logistics business, Jumaya Logistics, and our digital payment and fintech platform, Jumaya Pay. Jumaya Logistics enables the seamless delivery of millions of packages, while Jumaya Pay facilitates the online payments. Sounds a lot like Amazon, doesn't it? And the distribution of broad range digital and financial services, except for that part. So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, she dropped about 40% from 1.2 million down to 727,000 shares today. Share structure for JMIA. Outstanding share count is all they give us. Looks to be about 100 million shares. As I've already told you, the float isn't going to be any higher than the outstanding share count, so it could be as high as 100 million, or it could be considerably less. Your guess is as good as mine. Market cap for Jumaya, this is $131 million. Financials for Jumaya, well, they're making good revenues. Back in 2019, they had virtually $180 million. During COVID, they took a $20 million dip put that back on in 2021 and then pushed it up to 221 million at the end of 2022 and they got to keep 130 million in profits looking good to me quarterly eh, they don't give us anything here either balance sheet though we got one of those cash in the bank they have got about 71 and a half million dollars total assets 330 million Total liabilities, $155 million. That leaves us positive stockholder equity of $174 million. Include the liabilities, $330 million. It's looking good for the shareholders. Disclosures for Jemaya. We don't have anything current here to consider. So let's just jump on into that news. Now the thing here is, is that they don't give us any news here. This is the dedicated news and this is news that's brought in from online and they really didn't bring anything in but Seeking Alpha. And Seeking Alpha is just a little condensed version with not a lot of information, just bullets. Problem is I can't even see that. I've been there so often that they want to charge me for it now and I'm not going to pay them. But I do have that information. This is a article that came out about the news. This came out October 2nd. Starlink and Jumaya collaborate to expand internet services in Africa. Now, are you familiar with who Starlink is? It's owned by Elon Musk. Let's start there. Starlink can deliver high-speed, low-latency internet to users all over the world. As the world's first and largest satellite constellation using a low Earth orbit, Starlink delivers broadband internet capable of supporting, streaming, online gaming, video calls, and more. Starlink is engineered and operated by SpaceX, which is owned by Elon Musk. As the world's leading provider of launch services, SpaceX is leveraging its deep experience with both spacecraft and on-orbit operations to deploy the world's most advanced broadband internet system. Now, this is great for Africa. They don't have to put up poles or dig ditches and lay all these wires. That's a very big continent, and that would cost a lot of money. This is going to be low-orbiting satellites, so it doesn't take very long for the information to get up to these satellites and back down to Earth. We can use it without having to wait. Plus, from what I understand, it's going to be cheap. It's going to be under $10 a month, which is perfect for Africa. So taking a look at this news, this did come out October 2nd, and they tell us that Jumaya, the leading e-commerce platform in Africa, has announced an agreement with Starlink, a satellite internet service to retail the Starlink residential kit in Africa. With this partnership, Jumaya aims to bridge the digital divide by delivering Starlink's high-speed, low-latency internet to previously underserved regions of Africa. The agreement will initially cover Nigeria, with plans for expansions to Kenya and thereafter to the remaining African countries where Jemaya operates. 
The company says we are thrilled to be the first company on the continent to join forces with Starlink to expand this groundbreaking technology in Africa. Now, folks, this is where he is starting. From what I understand, Starlink is planned to cover the entire planet, but this is where it's starting, and this company has an exclusive rights to sell it to Nigeria and Kenya. As it expands, they get more and more. I'm loving it. This is hot technology that this company has got exclusive rights to for an entire continent at this point in time. And the chart isn't looking bad either. Let's go take a look at that now. Looking at a one day, one year chart for Jumaya Technologies, ticker JMIA. It was basically a year ago, we had a high of $5.43 and at the beginning of October, we hit a low of $2.23. She was definitely on a downhill trend here with some volatility and broke out over the 200 right here. But you see how steep that is? That is a downhill decline. No doubt about that shit. We're now taking a look at a one day, one year chart for Jumaya Technologies, ticker JMIA. A year ago, we had a 52 week high of $5.43. And at the beginning of October, we had a 52 week low of $2.23. She was on a downhill trend here. She broke out over the 200 on her one year chart, but that's way too steep to stand on. She lost her footing and fell down to this low bubble. And off of that low, she is changing her trend. She is breaking out right now. Looking at that six month, four hour, you can see it. We had a high here back in July of $5 and then an abrupt fall. And I have no idea what this is all about. And she wasn't done when she cracked her butt here. She continued falling down to this low. But right now, she is changing trend. She is bouncing off of this low bubble, going through all of her SMAs, breaking the 200, testing the 200, jumping on her nine-day escalator, and starting to climb. This is looking very good. All of our SMAs are lined up nicely and combed evenly. They are all approaching the 200 day SMA. When each one of these cross the 200, that is a golden cross. It will give some power to the price because investors get excited about golden crosses. Our volume is nothing special right now, but our oscillators are strong. Our PPO is pushing up. Our MACD is just bounced off and pushing up. And our RSI is up at 62 right now. Everything is looking nice. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. 20 days ago, we had a high of $2.87, broke through the 200 with a little bit of scrappling before she fell down to this low. And now she's changed her trend. She's gone through all of her SMAs, including the 200, hit a nice high here of about 281. And then she fell back to her 50. That was a bad fall, but she stopped hard and solid and she has tested that 50 quite a few times and now she's jumped again, got through her 20 and she is climbing even after market. Oscillators are still showing a lot of strength. Our PPO is pushing up hard. Our MACD is above the signal line pushing up and our RSI is at 60. Checking out that five day, five minute. That's a beautiful chart. We got a low in this corner of 228. Here's a high of 281. She went sideways after hitting that high, broke the 200, fell underneath it for a whole day, and then came back up. And right now, it looks like she's getting ready to climb again. Our oscillators say she is in recovery mode. You see that little itty bitty push off of the pink line right there. And our MACD is just about ready to come up over its line. And it's pushing up. And our MACD is up at 62 with a very strong climb right now. This is looking good, folks. Let me see here. I want to check something out. I thought I could see that. Look at our volume. Our volume is growing. She was strong, tapered off, and at the end of the day, it was getting stronger and stronger. That's a good telltale sign, folks. I am liking this company. This is the only company in Africa working with Elon Musk working with Starlink. They have an exclusive contract for the whole continent. Now, right now they're only working in Nigeria, then moving over to Kenya, but who else is there? Nobody. And at some point in time, Starlink is planned to cover the entire planet. This company has got Africa, and I don't know of any other companies right now working with Starlink. So I'm liking Jumaya, ticker J-M-I-A. It's on my watch list. 
these stocks just don't want to cooperate. I told you I was looking for stocks with gains between 5 and 10%. Well, IDVV blew the doors off that. She doubled it with 20% gains today. Oh, well, what are you going to do? So this is International Endeavors, ticker IDVV. Now, she's got a sweet chart. It's an atypical breakout chart that is breaking out right now. Now, the company's had a lot of catalysts. They have been getting into artificial intelligence and they've made a lot of purchases here recently and they've made some deals. The problem is, is that we haven't had any new news since the end of June and I'm not quite sure what's going on. It all looks good to me. I'm sure they're making money, but we haven't had any new information, but the chart looks hot. So we're going to see what a stale catalyst can do with a hot chart. So IDVV, she finished today at a real low price today, 0.0015 with 20% gains. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got both those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. The verified profile and the transfer agent verified. So that looks good. So what is International Endeavors about? Well, they tell us here that International Endeavors is engaged in locating and acquiring and partnering with established companies, brands, and technologies with a focus on solar, crypto, and artificial intelligence. The company has operations in Nevada, Southern California, Baja, Mexico, and Latin America. And for a little more information, I've jumped on over here into one of their most recent financials. International Endeavors Corporation is engaged in locating, acquiring, and partnering with established companies. In addition, the company has sold its CBD and peripheral businesses associated with CBD in exchange for revenue share. The company has a wholly owned subsidiary, Wit Tech, that is focused on several AI automation products in the area of marketing, financial, medical, and legal services. Now, the truth is, Wit Tech is two AIs. It is Wit Tech and SF Corporation, and they are working in some of the biggest sectors, folks marketing, financial, medical, and legal. Those are huge, huge sectors. The company is also developing AI technology for real estate investing and is involved with fix and flip properties in the United States, another massive sector. Now, this is the only place I have found this information. Management is presently evaluating a merger opportunity with the intention of finalizing it in the fourth quarter of 2023. We've only got, what, a month and three weeks left of this year, so something's bound to happen. Merger plans would not require a reverse stock split. Yay! We love those reassurances. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, we had a little bit of a drop going from 4.5 million down to 3.1 million. Share structure for IDVV, oh my God. Wow, they're diluted. Authorized shares, they got 1 billion shares total. That is all they own. Well, they got 998 million of them on the market. The good news is, is that the insiders own most of those. They've got almost 600 million shares, leaving us about 400 million shares. Not a great float. That's a pretty high float. And the problem here is, is that they can't do any public offerings. I know that doesn't sound like a problem to you, but if they need money, they have no more shares to sell. So we could see a uh, request for their authorized share count to be increased, but that wouldn't hurt us directly. And let's see what else we got here. Market cap is awfully low, but then what would you expect when the price is 0 0.0015 and you multiply that times the shares? Well, their market cap is only 1.2 million. Financials for IDVV. Well, they're making some money now. For the last three years, they weren't making anything to talk about. This last year, 2022, they did $1.5 million dollars. And the great news is it didn't cost them one penny, not one dollar for it. They got to keep every dollar that they made, all 1.5 million. Quarterly, uh-oh, what's going on here? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. 55, 55,000 for the last two quarters uh, and zero and 100,000. I don't know where that big money came from. Oh, 
probably selling the CBD companies. That would be where that came from, and they would put it in the, uh, the revenue pile. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. Oh, my God, look, <laughs> look at the cash in the bank. We got three zeros we got to add to that. Thank goodness they got $1,000 in the bank. Total assets, $1.4 million. Total liabilities, $1.2 million. Leaving us about a quarter million dollars of shareholder equity. Add the liabilities in there, we're at about $1.5 million. Think of it as a startup company. She is just getting things going right now. Looking at her disclosures, we don't have anything here for a few years. So let's just jump on over into that news. The company has a lot of news and most of it is about getting into AI. Now I have scrolled back here to April 28th. They tell us that the company is moving forward into artificial intelligence. In May, the company launches into AI industry with opportunity to shape two burgeoning multi-billion dollar markets. I think they're in more than just two multi-billion dollar markets now. Then on the 5th of May and the 9th of May, we had two pieces of news come out and I thought they were duplicates, but they're not. And we're going to jump into these here in just a second. Then we have three pieces of news in June. IDV enters letter of intent to acquire artificial intelligence AI sector technology company. Now they've already got two AIs. They have Wit Tech and SF Corporation. They are now purchasing Scribs Artificial Intelligence. And the last piece of news came out June 27th. The company is amassing revenue. I like the way that sounds. To drive rapid expansion in the AI sector and eliminate debt. That sounds good too. So let's dive into a few of these pieces of news. First one came out May 5th. The company announced that its AI division, WitTech, has entered into an agreement with its first client in the medical sector, Anti-Aging and Wellness, a provider of various anti-aging treatments, including stem cell therapy, HGH therapy, TRT therapy, and more. Terms of the agreement call for the following, an extensive AI marketing campaign beginning in Southern California, Nevada, and Latin America, including Mexico. The agreement is to be for one year for non-exclusive rights to the IDVV plans, and the company will be paid quarterly based on monthly fees and sales volume. Now, the other piece of news is likened to that one. The company has announced that its AI division, WitTech, has entered into another agreement with a client in the health and wellness sector, TW Universal a provider of various products ranging from meal replacement supplements to customized workout strategies. Terms of the agreement call for the following, an extensive AI marketing campaign beginning in Southern California and Nevada, deployment of AI tools for subscription-based services. These are services they're gonna be able to charge for every month or every six month. And again, the companies will be paying them on a quarterly basis with monthly fees based on sales volume. And that last piece of news, this came out June 9th. The company announced that it has entered into a letter of intent to acquire Scribs Ventures, a private entity holding artificial intelligence technology. This acquisition will add revenues and expand IDVV's presence in the artificial intelligence sector. Scribs currently has operations in Southern California and Florida. It has developed several AI-based technologies utilizing speech recognition and text generation. These technologies are currently being used by Scribs to generate revenues with existing clients, which are going to be all of theirs now. Jeremy Smith of IDVV stated, we see a way of incorporating these technologies into our existing products to increase our capabilities. This will also enable us to enter the smartphone, smart device segment of AI or artificial intelligence. We plan on staying ahead of this industry and this will enable us to begin working with devices such as iPhone, Android, Amazon Alexa, Apple Siri, etc. We will be clarifying the uses in several updates over the next couple of weeks and are launching a website dedicated to our AI developments by July 1st. 
July 1st. Well, that's already happened, so their website should be up right now. Now, they do tell us here, I wasn't aware of this, they say the closing date for this deal was September 1st, so it should have already happened. They are also reviewing the technology and the potential patents by IDVV Council. They are restructuring, eliminating corporate debt, and they have zero debt that will be issued for this transaction. It all sounds really good. IDVV Company Vice President Bill Martin stated utilizing a combination of approximately 600,000 in revenues that have come in since the acquisition and issuing restricted equity will be able to secure this acquisition and reduce our corporate debt. This sounds good. They're already making money. They haven't given us any more news, so things should be good. I'm really interested in seeing that next financial. Since they're not telling us anything in words, we're going to let the numbers speak. But right now, the numbers that are speaking are on the chart. The price is climbing. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is a one-day, one-year chart for IDVV International Endeavors. And actually, this is the entire chart. This ticker came on the market November 7th at 0025. And it was in February, she had a nice rip from that 0025 all the way up to 0044, breaking through that 200 strong. Then coming all the way down here to this low of 0007, which she hit in May. Now I've drawn a support on that low because right now she has bounced off of it and that is changing everything. You can see she's ready to break out on the one year chart, but she's already doing it on the six month chart. We got the same high and the same low. She has been in a downtrend all this time with her breaks through the 200 becoming less and less until she was completely under the 200. And it was here just about oh, five days ago. She tagged on to that strong support, our low, and she has bounced off of that. She has gone through all of her SMAs, cracked that 200 hard, big wick going through another resistance at 0015, coming back down higher than where she started. I like this. This tells me I'm going to continue to go forward. She did. She jumped on her nine-day SMA, and she is firmly above that 200-day SMA right now, clear up here. All of our other SMAs are looking sweet. They've all turned up and are pushing in the right direction. Speaking of pushing in the right direction, every single oscillator is pushing up right now. Folks, you can't go wrong if every oscillator is pushing up. 20-day, one-hour view. So she's on a downtrend here underneath the 200, hitting that low, bouncing off of it, going through all of her SMAs, through the 200, hitting that high bubble, pulling back to her nine-day SMA, not completely holding it, got close to the 20, is trying to ride back up. Finally, finally we touched it. We got to touch it. You can't push off of nothing. We've touched it and now we're pushing up again. We've broke that strong resistance and we are up here right there. We are right there above that. Volume is nothing today. We need some volume to come in, but all of our SMAs are crossing the 200 right now. That is looking excellent. Our oscillators, all of them are still pushing up. We've got a crossover on our MACD. RSI is up at 65. Everything is looking good except for that volume. Five day, five minute. Got some stair stepping going on here and some climbing. She went from triple zero eight up to double zero one six. That is 100% gains right there. She fell back, broke through the 50, which has just come into the picture, came back up onto the top of the 50, and she does actually look good. She's pulling back a little bit right now, but you can see the turn on this nine day SMA shows that she wants to climb. We got our 20 day crossing the 50 and we have no 200 yet. Osculators, our PPO is climbing, our MACD is climbing and our RSI is at 58. I'm not gonna say it's scalding hot folks, but it's looking really good. And I think the news is enough to get this to keep moving. I know it's old news, but they should have closed that deal in September. That deserves some more due diligence. And they said they have a merger coming up and we don't have any information about that. Oh, please bring out a press release on that merger this week. IDVV, I think she's got potential. I think all the stocks we've looked at today have potential.
And I've given you enough information to show that to you. But if you're going to invest in it, if you're going to play these stocks, do some more due diligence, folks. I did not cover everything. Who knows what I missed? And you are investing your money. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.